Hey, Olivia, can you hear us all right? Yep, I can hear you. Thank you. All right, perfect. We'll go uh, back on you, turn the job. And good morning, all you fast people. I did it and I gave it to Jackson so he could work in it. And if you still have changes, I'm glad I'm glad. Yeah. 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 But it's still no, 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 still kind of hanging no, there. No. Yeah, still. Okay. And can anyone hear me, please? No. Before Tomorrow's I week five so for me. You hear you oh, so for me, it was sometimes you'll the day after Christmas. Yeah, well, there's, yeah, you got it. Yeah. Mayor Welch, we can hear you just fine. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yep.
Um, but Bob Christash was planning to call him. He is, yeah. He's okay. kind of sick, so he didn't want to yep. attend in person. So we might just see our phone number on there. Might be a 590-701. So at some point, Bob Christash may call him, but yeah. I, I just asked want to make himself available if there's questions on Lacey or Barnett. That's right. I asked him to be here. So they participate. <laughs> so the forum is five, right? Before we said four, four. Oh, okay. So we don't have Jason Old. Joe Kent is out today. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see him on either. Well, we do have corn four. Okay. Well, I was thinking five. But... <laughs> Anytime you're ready. Okay. Let's call, we will call our policy board meeting uh, Wednesday, January 18th to order at 12 o'clock. Uh, we'll, we'll do intro introductions here in the room first, then we'll go online for our policy board members. Um, we'll start off at uh, Bryce Ward, Fairbanks North Star Borough. Jerry Clearer, City of Fairbanks. Brad Roderman, Fairbanks North Star Borough Assembly. Corey Giuliano, Fast Planning. Jackson Fox with Fast Planning. All right, thanks. That's a table here in the room. And then online, do we have uh, who do we have for policy board members? Looks like Mayor Welch. Mayor Mike Welch, City of North Pole. Good afternoon. All right, and we have Mr. Olds, or do we have uh, Mr. Olds online? All right, we'll just keep an eye out for him if he joins us today. Uh, so that does mean that we have uh, four members, so we do have quorum uh, to perform our business here. We'll start off with uh, our agenda for January 18th. Do we have a motion for approval of the agenda? So moved. So moved by Mr. Cleaver. Second. Second by Mr. Rodeman. Do we have any discussion on our agenda? Yeah, I, I know Jackson is concerned about things. I think what we should do is just get to old business and then make any amendments and then postpone them in light of what you had mentioned yesterday. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, what I was, uh, what I asked yesterday was potentially move item 8A for old business so we can discuss um, air quality and how it impacts uh, these documents before we discuss okay. the documents. But that, that's up to the board to, to like change the order of the agenda. No, I, I'd be happy to do that. I'd make a motion. We go ahead and make 8A, uh, move it up to make it 7 A or whatever we want to call So we will take up item 8A first and then back to old business? Correct. Okay. Motion made by Mr. Cleworth. I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Rodeman. Do we have any discussion on the amendment to rearrange the agenda? All right. I'm not seeing any. Uh, and we probably should take roll call as we've got folks online and in person. Is that uh, accurate sure. assumption? All Start right. out with Mayor Welch. Here. Uh, yay or nay, uh, Mayor Welch? He's, he's yay, said here. Yay. I'm going, yes, I think you're just okay. roll call. Right? Mr. Cleaver. Yeah, yay or yes, here. Mr. Rodeman. Here. Or, yes. All right, so our motion to rearrange the agenda or amendments to rearrange the agenda uh, passes. Do we have any further discussion on the agenda as amended? All right, I'm not seeing any. Mr. Fox, do you call the roll on the agenda as amended? Okay, hey, Mayor Welch. Yes. Mr. Playwright? Yes. Mr. Rodeman? Yes. 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 All right, the agenda has been approved. That brings us to the minutes for December 21st, 20. What, uh, December 21st, 2022. We have a motion on our agenda or on our minutes today. I'll move to approve. So moved by Mr. Cleworth. Second. Second by Mr. Rodeman. Do we have any discussion on the minutes of our previous meeting? The this amended version. Do you want to formally do that? Ms. Cleworth? There have been some corrections that have been made to it. Should we acknowledge that or does that need to be done? 
It's just typos and things like that. Um, if there are typos and clerical errors or issues that were addressed, I don't think that they need to be addressed. No, I'll just submit a motion for they don't change the substance of the minutes, but they they are typos. So edits were made and the minutes have been cleaned up. Okay. Um, any further discussion on our minutes through the previous meeting? All right, I'm not seeing any. Uh, Mr. Fox, do you call the roll on the minutes? Yeah, Mr. Clayer. Yes. Mr. Rutterman. Yes. Mayor Welling. Yes. Mayor Ward. Yes. All right, our minutes have been approved uh, with those edits. That brings us to committee working group reports, including the chair's report. Uh, Mr. Fox, if you'd like to start us off. Yes, absolutely. Court, if you go to page 10, happen. So two notes, two um, items here on project planning meetings. Uh, first one of which is which is going to relate to item 8A um, on the agenda, which we'll take up first after public comment. Um, I did have a uh, informative call for the Federal Highways Alaska Division Office uh, on the status of our 2045 Metropolitan Transportation Plan update and our new uh, federal fiscal years 2023 through 2027 transportation improvement program document. Um, and the fact that uh, we have not yet received the uh, draft air quality conformity analysis uh, from our consultants who are working on that. Uh, and that document has not yet been uh, released for public comment. Um, based on the, the deadline uh, for our last uh, air quality conformity analysis that will expire at the end of this month. Uh, so the nature of the call was discussing um, how uh, these two documents um, uh, will lapse uh, for air quality conformity, and we'll be falling into a one-year grace period uh, to get that document uh, out to public comment and get that approved by the Federal Highway Administration, Federal Transit Administration. So I'll discuss that in more detail for any item um, 8A. Um, the other note on this page, is that we have drafted the scope of services uh, for the updates to the borough's short and long range transit plans, as well as their coordinated food services transportation plan. Uh, that scope of services has been shared with borough's community planning department uh, staff, as well as MAPS transit staff. Uh, they have provided us edits uh, to that scope of services, uh, which we will complete uh, either today or tomorrow. Um, our intention is to take that draft scope of services through our bike and ped advisory committee um, at the end of this month. And then next month in February, we'll bring that forward to the technical committee and policy board for approval. Um, if the policy board approves that scope of services next month, so with any revisions you would like to see, uh, we will issue a request for proposals to hire a consultant uh, to assist us with that work. Um, that request for proposals will likely go out in uh, March, and we should have a consultant on board by, uh, by April. Uh, next, uh, Corey, if you'll scroll down, scroll down to the bottom of the page, a few items underneath related to our organization. Back up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we are continuing work uh, with Alliance CPAs on our independent CPA audit. Uh, that work is uh, coming to a close here uh, this week or next, and we do intend to have Alliance CPAs attend the February call support meeting uh, to present their audit reports uh, to the board. Um, also, a separate uh, but somewhat related audit, we have completed our, our state audit with DOT Internal Review, uh, which is, establishes our indirect cost rate for billing purposes towards our grant. Um, and I'll share that with you behind the staff report. Um, our indirect cost rate has gone up slightly from 143% up to 148%, so not a large change, but it is based on federal fiscal year 2022's um, direct labor and indirect expenses. And then uh, a couple other notes here. We did submit the change of officials forms to the Alaska Division of Corporations, uh, uh, officially designating our new policy board members um, on the board of directors for our nonprofit corporation. We have applied for the 2023 City of Fairbanks business license. On the next page, we did submit invoices uh, to the two cities, the borough and DOT, uh, for payment of annual dues to fast planning. Um, these went out in uh, early January. Uh, we have received one payment uh, thus far from the city of North Fault. Um, but as is typical, it takes about a month to six weeks or so uh, to collect all these annual dues. But just to know, we have received one of the four payments today. And then underneath public outreach, 
Um, much of the information in today's packet uh, related to the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, as well as our transportation improvement program, uh, much of the information is the same. Um, however, since your last meeting, uh, we did get a, um, a, a large number of new public comments on both of these documents. So today's packet, we do have complete uh, public comment summaries for both of those documents to present to you all. And then um, also of note, underneath public outreach, I did attend the uh, January meeting of the Borough Assembly Road Service Area Committee um, and did represent uh, some of the options and recommendations that were included in our road service area expansion plan as that committee was setting goals uh, for things to work on here moving forward in 2023. And then lastly, underneath funding, uh, we have issued our call for project nominations uh, for transportation projects uh, that improve air quality in our area. Uh, with use of our congestion mitigation and air quality funds and our new carbon reduction program funds. Uh, this call to project nominations is open from January 16th through February 17th. Uh, we did hold a two hour workshop uh, here in our office yesterday uh, from noon to 2 p.m. Um, to uh, explain to applicants uh, what eligible okay. project types that we have as well as the amount of funding that we have available for this, for this program. <laughs> um, again, applications are are due February 17th, um, after which time uh, we will take those project nominations and run them to the Federal Highways Alaska Division Office for eligibility reviews, have our technical committee members score those projects, and have our air quality consultant uh, perform emission reduction calculations on those. Um, and we will develop a funding plan in March, we'll bring forward a draft funding plan for those project nominate, nominated uh, to you to the board here in uh, April. And so behind the staff report, a couple other items of note. Um, I'd like to see a copy of the final audit determination from DOT internal review. It's on pages 12 through 14. This, show, this shows you um, our new indirect cost rate uh, moving forward in the federal fiscal year 23. It's just gone up by about 5%. And then uh, last item for my staff report is on page 15. We have the technical committee action items uh, for uh, their January meeting. Um, at this meeting, uh, they did recommend uh, to the policy board to um, approve both the transportation recruitment program document as well as the metropolitan transportation program document without any further amendments. Um, however, for our transportation recruitment program uh, document, they would like the policy board. Uh, today to discuss a long range plan for the Barnett Street reconstruction project, which is not at this time included in the funding plan. So we can take that um, up during business item 78. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Fox. And for the record, Mayor Cruz has joined us. Uh, do we have any questions for Mr. Fox on the staff report? I'm not seeing any in the room uh, here. Uh, oh, uh, Mayor Bruce. On page 13, memorandum, state of Alaska, um, to from Deb, uh, it says, based on prior knowledge, FAST has an, an underlying just adequate project cost accounting system that can identify. Is adequate a good descriptive adjective? Is it a normal descriptive adjective? Is it like your only adequate descriptive adjective? Uh, the individuals that perform this audit are licensed CPAs. That is a common term that they use, adequate. Uh, as I stated, so I thought, when I came in the meeting here, uh, we will get, board will get an uh, audit report for our line CPAs, which is doing our independent CPA audit. So we, we have two audits that we do. This is the state one here. Okay. So you'll hear more about um, our adequate. accounting procedures and protocols and how adequate they are. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Fox? All right, I'm not seeing any in the room or online, so we'll move on to our public comment period. Do we have any members of the public that wish to give testimony today on any non-action items? Not seeing anyone in the room. I am not seeing anyone online, and I would like to note that online we do have Mr. Olds with TEC that's joined us, so we do have uh, uh, him with us online as well. 
All right. I'm seeing no anyone. I'm not seeing anyone that wishes to provide testimony today. So we will move on to our first item of business today, which is reorganized uh, with the agenda setting to be eight of item 8A. So this is new business item 8A, draft 2045 MTP air quality conformity analysis is an action item. Mr. Cox, if you give us an introduction, then we'll do comments. Yes, uh, Corey, we are going to that one for me. So as I stated during my staff report here, um, uh, we have yet to receive the draft air quality conformity analysis uh, from our consultant, uh, Tom Carlson, with three of the consultants. Um, this air quality conformity analysis is, uh, is related to the regional emissions analysis for our metropolitan transportation plan, which looks at all the projects we intend to construct over a 20-year planning horizon. Um, the schedule for delivery of that was uh, December, so last month. Um, as is typical with metropolitan transportation plans, we released those for public comment um, concurrently with release of the draft air quality conformity analysis. So the analysis done on that, that document and that project list um, at the same time. Um, we do expect delivery of it this week, uh, but it has not yet been released for public comment. Um, and also, as I stated during my staff report, <clears throat> the expiration of our current air quality, quality analysis uh, for our transportation network uh, expires at the end of this month. So in communication with the Federal Highway Administration, Alaska Division Office, uh, we will be going into what's called an air quality conformity lapse. Um, however, they indicated to me it's not a big deal uh, because we, had, we will simply enter into a one-year grace period uh, to get that draft analysis released for public comment. Um, and approved by the Federal Highway Administration and Federal Transit Administration. So they don't have large concerns for us. But what I've included in the packet here, beginning on page 158, um, is a guidance document that is uh, distributed by the Federal Highway Administration, which basically explains the uh, what a lapse is, what the one-year grace period is, um, and uh, what the effects uh, that will have on our our funding plan moving forward over the next month. So, and I've highlighted the pertinent sections uh, for you all to pay attention to. Uh, first one of which on page 158 at the bottom. Again, um, we will be entering into a one year grace period uh, before consequences of the conformity lapse uh, to our organization and our funding plans are applicable. And then on the next page, um, it states that as long as the ballot TIP, or what, what we call our transportation group program, as well as the statewide transportation group program, as long as those documents are still valid and in place during this lapse grace period, um, all of our projects can continue to be um, obligated by federal highways and federal transit administration. Um, and for your, uh, for everybody's benefits, our current 2019 through 2023 transportation group program, uh, that document is valid until June of this year. So we have pretty much a six month window before uh, these federal agencies will stop obligations of our funds for these projects. Mm -hmm. um, on the next page, page 160, this just reiterates that we are in scenario number one, that if the Metropolitan Transportation Plan and its air quality conformity has expired, uh, but the states and our local transportation permit programs are still in effect, and then federal highways and the Federal Transit Administration can continue to authorize projects, approve environmental documents, project level quality uh, determinations. So it should not be a big impact to us. Um, but then on page 162, last, last page of this guidance document here, it explains uh, what happens uh, during a conformity freeze, uh, which is a secondary topic I'd like to I'd like to discuss um, underneath this item here, uh, but this outlines the, um, or helps explain what's about to happen to us all with the EPA's partial disapproval of the state's implementation plan for air quality for our area. In effect, we will be in a conformity freeze uh, once the EPA makes a decision following the public comment period. And what that will do is freeze our funding plans. So it'll freeze our transportation improvement program uh, such that we cannot make any further amendments to that until the freeze is, is listed. Um, but the, and I'd like to talk about that here, uh, that conformity freeze and the EPA's notice 
uh, here separately in a minute. Uh, but on this topic here of our air quality conformity lapse in the one-year grace period, I am uh, asking the policy board uh, today uh, to pass a motion to authorize me to release the draft air quality conformity analysis um, once it is received by our consultant, our Trinity Consultants for 30-day public comment period. So I'm asking you to authorize me to release it for public comment prior to your review of the document. Um, I have not seen the document yet because it's still a work in progress, um, but I do have in writing from our consultant that the draft analysis will show that emissions for all analysis years, 2022, 2024, 2028, 2035, and 2045, are comfortably below the applicable M2.5 and uh, NOx emission budgets. This analysis does include all of the um, Kinross trucks uh, on our transportation network for the years uh, 24 and 28. So it does include the additional trucks on our network. Um, so the analysis will show that we are comfortably below our emission budgets for our area on the uh, vehicle emission side. So I don't have any concerns uh, with releasing this document without the board's first review. Uh, my uh, focus at this time is simply getting it out for public review so that the board can approve it uh, during your February meeting. So move for your request for the motion. <laughs> we have to do a public comment first, okay. uh, but we can take questions if there's any additional questions. Yeah. <clears throat> Would you like to talk about the Federal Register under this item too, Mr. Fox? I'll leave that up to you as chair. Um, there is a separate but related issue. We have Federal Register notice, uh, but it's not related to the motion <clears throat> that I'm asking for at this time. So we can handle that after a motion is voted upon. Um, or if you'd like me to present that other information this time before any motion is made, I'm happy to do that as well. Uh, we did. We moved this whole item forward, so let's let's get the full report now. Okay, yeah. we can address those um, specific motions that come out of that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So beginning on page one sixty three, go to the next page, Court. As you should all be aware from reading the newspaper. Um, in the Federal Register, a notice has been uh, published uh, by the Environmental Protection Agency uh, indicating a partial uh, disapproval of the state's implementation plan uh, for air quality, the PM2.5 serious non-attainment area. Uh, this is a, there is a, there's 60 days in which uh, uh, the public and our uh, local aid agencies and organizations can provide comment. The comment deadline is March 13, 2023. Um, and this goes, go ahead and go to the next page there. Um, I've just, this federal register notice is 42 pages long. And I just picked out four pages to highlight some information for you to get uh, the clip notes of this notice. Uh, but first off on page 164, uh, this shows you the consequences of disapproval of that plan. On the bottom left there, it indicates that um, if this plan is ultimately disapproved following the end of the public comment period, uh, the first sanction would apply um, would, would apply 18 months after the EPA disapproves of that plan. And that first sanction would impose um, uh, two to one offsets uh, for new sources um, of emissions to our area. And then if that deficiency remains, still remains uncorrected after 24 months, uh, the EPA can sanction um, approval of uh, prohibition on the approval of funding for certain highway projects. So that would mean that the majority of funding that we have received in our transportation approval program would, in effect, uh, we would not be able to obligate or spend any of that funding if that latter sanction takes into effect after the 24 month period. Um, and that not only goes for our funding, but it also goes for uh, state DOT's funding for transportation projects in our area. Uh, the only exempt projects uh, from that um, freeze on our funding uh, would be for safety projects or projects, transportation projects that improve air quality, uh, which is a small portion of the funding that we allocate to our area. Um, on average, in any given year, there's between 50 and $60 million uh, invested into the transportation network in our area. We're a small portion of that, about $12 million of that $50 to $60 million total, but the balance of that 
is um, state DOT funded projects uh, within our within our area. So uh, the consequences are pretty pretty severe here um, if we are not able to get to an approvable state implementation plan for our air quality issue here in town. In that middle paragraph, uh, does outline some further detail on the uh, direct effects to fast plan and our um, metropolitan transportation plan and our transportation approval program. So what is what is the EPA dis, disapproving of? That's outlined on page 165. This is the summary. Um, they are indicating partial disapproval of some control strategies uh, for residential and commercial fuel oil fired devices, requirements for wood sellers, coal fired heating devices, uh, small commercial area sources, including coffee roasters, char, char boilers, and used oil burners. Yeah. Weatherization and energy efficient measures and mobile source uh, emissions. Uh, they are also disapproving the control strategies for our four area power plants, including the Chena Power Plant, Fort Wainwright, UAF, and the Zender Plant, particularly the Golden Valley Plant. Uh, but of, of note here as well, in the next column, uh, they're also um, uh, proposing partial disapproval of our motor vehicle emission budgets that were presented uh, in that in that document. Um, Specific to, to kind of our lane on the next page, page 166, this is some additional information on emissions from all the sources. Um, the summary of this is basically the, the approach taken in the state's implementation plan for area on mobile sources is that um, uh, the state's opinion, and we share this, or I share the same opinion, uh, that emissions from vehicles um, are relatively de minimis. Um, in our area. So, and I don't know the exact number. I'll have to go back to the emission inventory, but I believe it's around three to five percent of the PM 2.5 emissions in our in our area. Uh, so in the state's plan, they do not offer up any specific transportation control measures uh, that uh, we, we would have to abide by uh, in our area. Um, however, as noted on this page, uh, the EPA did not agree with that de minimis argument for our uh, mobile source emissions, and they would like to see some control strategies um, or, trans or transportation control measures included in the state's plan when it is when it is resubmitted. So again, this this federal register, the public comments are are going to be taken uh, between now and uh, March 13th. And um, if the policy board member would like, I would like to begin drafting a comment letter. Um, on this notice from fast planning, and it will focus uh, pretty much exclusively on transportation issues. Uh, but one comment that I think would be appropriate to start with um, is that, uh, for lack of better words, here is that the penalties here uh, don't don't um, don't fit the crime. So vehicle emissions are not uh, a large contributing source to our air quality problem here locally, and um, in my opinion, it seems unfair to that the penalty would relate to our highway uh, highway transportation funding and um, restrictions and uh, on those on those dollars uh, because the air quality issue is uh, predominantly from uh, wood smoke. So um, so that would be that would be one comment that we could uh, that we could make. And I'm open to any other suggestions from all support members and other comments you'd like me to include in, in my letter. So think on, think about that for a second. But there is one more federal register. That will increase federal funding for the borough's uh, change up program. We we could make we can make any and all comments. That's, <laughs> That's the issue. They got, they got the response. Have them invest. Just okay. thought, Mayor. Um, let's take. We'll do questions first, and we can get into debate. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so the last thing I want to present is that um, this is not in the Federal Register yet that I'm aware of, but it is imminent. So beginning on page 167, um, on top of all this, uh, the EPA is uh, proposing to lower um, the PM 2.5 uh, standards. Um, uh, this, and this would apply um, across the U.S., not just our area here, but they are um, going to be issuing another 
60 day public comment period and another federal register notice where they will be uh, proposing to reduce the health based standard uh, for PM 2.5 uh, uh, emissions and uh, in our well, in, in our air, but this again, this applies um, nationwide. And on the so the next page, page 168 at the bottom, you'll see what they're proposing uh, to lower to. <laughs> so for the primary annual PM 2.5 standard, okay. standard, uh, they're proposing to lower that level for uh, 12 micrograms per uh, cubic meter down to nine to 10 micrograms per cubic meter. Uh, but more importantly, on the next page, page 169, uh, for the 24 hour uh, secondary 24 hour PM 2.5 standard, which is currently 35 micrograms per cubic meter, they're proposing to lower that 24 hour standard down to 25 micrograms per cubic meter. Um, and the, the reason it appears the EPA is proposing this, um, uh, lowering the level of these standards is based on health studies that uh, were completed uh, in 2019 to, to present. So, in uh, the next couple pages, uh, cover some of those new scientific studies that were completed. Uh, which backs up their uh, proposal to lower these lower these standards based on uh, health effects to folks uh, breeding uh, in 2.5. So that's not out yet, uh, but we may choose to also provide comment on that uh, secondary um, federal register notice, uh, which should be out soon. Okay, I'm going to stop talking there and answer questions. All right, questions from Paul's and board members. Shirley? Uh, so the stuff that was filed in the in the federal register, the state is currently working with EPA on it. So I mean, is this like carved in stone by EPA, or is the state currently negotiating with EPA to potentially revise this? I think that would be a good question for uh, Mr. Olds, who's online. Yes, for air quality um, director. And so I would point out this is their proposed disapproval um, and as Jackson mentioned you know any final action would come following the closure of the public comment period um, but we would anticipate some time between that closure period and when they would issue a sort of final decision and comment period um, we are working with and I might say against CPA to a certain extent uh, we feel that there are um, aspects of this plan that we can supply additional information to make them approvable, uh, primarily some economic analysis on portions that we didn't cover that don't necessarily pertain to uh, transportation, um, but we think that there are some adjustments that can be made. Um, I did encourage, you know, Jackson, if you haven't spoken with Tom about some of the transportation measures that were discovered, uh, I think in, tex in Texas, I, I would concur that um, the punishment doesn't fit the crime, but that we don't necessarily have a lot of control or hope that we can change that. Um, and there may be some, albeit uh, small in effect, but transportation measures that we can include to um, revise this for potential approval. Our path is to try and get an approvable SIP with what we have. And that's in coordination with the borough, the input from our initial proposed SIP and um, in working with EPA. Questions? I do have a few questions. Um, the, the clock doesn't start until the this is a proposed notice so the the, the 18 month clock kind of shop clock if you will doesn't start until they actually make a decision is that correct that's my understanding yes okay so um so uh, question here hey bruce what's the time period for uh, epa review and re for revisions after the public comment period is over there are some unknowns that we are tracking. There's a lawsuit from Earth Justice to compel EPA to um, make that determination. And so through a settlement of that suit, they could push the timeline. Um, our best estimates in talking with EPA normally is that they would be looking at uh, 
midwinter around this time next year. So a year from now is sort of the best estimate. Uh, we do have intervening status on that lawsuit. And so we'd be a party to those discussions to try and prevent any expedited timeline to make that final determination. Thank you for that answer. Yeah. Questions? I think there's two things here. One is the, uh, the draft report. We need to make a motion on it and then talk about the letter where we want to say, and I've got a few questions on that too, but okay. do you want to take the draft report first? Um, let's do our public comment and then we can take up multiple. It sounds, we will certainly have multiple action items at this agenda uh, item. So okay. I'm not seeing any additional questions. Let's go to public comment. Do we have any members in the room that wish to testify today? No, okay, but what about online? Do we have anyone online that wishes to testify on this item? I'm not seeing anyone in, online. Uh, policy board members, do we have a motion uh, to get us started for uh, these items today? Make a motion to release the transportation conformity analysis once received for air quality to the public for review before the board review so that we can move that item expeditiously. Right, so moved by Mr. Olds. Uh, Mr. Olds, was that to include the 30 day public comment period? Yes. Okay. Do we have a second for that motion? So uh, second. Second by Mr. Cleworth. Discussion on the motion to authorize uh, the release of the 30 day public comment period for the air quality conformity analysis once we receive it. I just have one question uh, for Jackson. You, you indicate that. You think that uh, Carlson will give us a, a good report? Yes. Um, is there any possibility that 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 may not be the case that, that you're unaware of? No, not that I'm not, not okay. that I'm aware of. No. Okay. No. Only reason I hesitate on that is I don't want to release a report where we have a a bomb that we didn't anticipate, right? And mm -hmm. which should come back before the board. So if this passes, some of it trust you to use your judgment on whether to release that or to bring it to the board if something goes awry. And I would like to make note that uh, once this document is released, I will be immediately scheduling what's called an interagency consultation on that draft analysis. So I will be hosting a meeting with Federal Highways, the Federal Transit Administration, EPA, the borough, and the State Department of Environment and Conservation uh, to do a thorough review of that analysis. and. Or receive any agency comments before the public comment deadline. So it will be presented to them. And as soon as I hear any concerns that they may have, I can share those with the board uh, prior to the public comment period ending. Yeah, I just I just don't want to shock to you or to any of us that report. So we don't want to leave you hanging. Further discussion or debate? Hmm. Online, do we have anyone online? All right, I'm not seeing anything from our online team. Um, I, I did have uh, one question on this one. Um, it is not normal for us to have a lapse like this. Um, is this, uh, have we had communications with the contractor on their performance on this item? Is there any issue there that needs to be addressed? <laughs> So no, I don't think there's any issue that needs to be addressed on that consultant side. Um, mm -hmm. One of the, the issues that delayed um, the air quality modeling was, was that we were looking for some fresh um, uh, land use data uh, from the borough's uh, community planning department. I understand there was some coordination between them and the GIS department of the borough. Um, we, we probably waited too long to receive that. We never did receive files that were necessary to update the modeling. So we're using old data years ago um, in that modeling effort. So there was some delays basically on our side here in Fairbanks, uh, but then also uh, once the decision was made to uh, move forward with whatever data that we that we had, uh, we fell into the holiday season um, uh, with uh, Christmas, New Year's, et cetera. So, um, they rushed to get the modeling done. They did complete it by December 22nd, so just before Christmas. Uh, but we can't just release 
the outputs from the model run. We kind of have a narrative that goes along with it that outlines all the assumptions and the data that they did use in that analysis. So um, there is so some of the delays were on our, were on our side, um, and some of the delays were on the consultant side. Um, but again, federal highways has stated to me that this is relatively common throughout the U.S. Uh, for um, these documents to go into a lapse for a period of a couple months before they get approved based on a variety of issues with schedule slips. And they weren't concerned with us because of the one-year grace period, which is codified into law. And so um, they they're, have stated that as soon as it's released for public comment, they're anxious to uh, review it and get a meeting and schedule. All right. Further discussion debate on this item? All right, we'll call the roll, Mr. Fox, on the use of the air quality conformity analysis. Okay, I'll start out with Mr. Olds. Yes. Mayor Cruz. Yes. Mr. Stewart. Yes. Mr. Rodman. Yes. Mayor Welch. Yes. Mayor Ward. Yes. All right, that item's been approved. We do have several items to take up under this item of business. Uh, do we have a, another motion from our policy board today? This is pertaining to the letter. Correct. Um, I would make a motion that we instruct uh, uh, Mr. Fox to go ahead and draft a response. Uh, do we want separate ones to the state, to the Fed? Or do you want... Just, I think it's only one letter, isn't it? Well, there'll be two federal register notices, so that technically there would be two letters if we choose to comment on both items. I would say yes. That's a, the motion would be to 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 draft the two letters then. Okay, so moved by Mr. Cleaworth to draft a letter in response to each of the federal notices. Took a little bit of liberty with your motion there, if that's all right. <clears throat> Uh, we like liberty. All right. Uh, do we have a second on that? Sure. Second, Secondly, Mayor second. Bruce. <laughs> All right. Uh, discussion on this item. Mr. Cleaworth, would you like to start us off? Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe you, Mayor, or Mr. Olds can help me. It's been a few years since I've been on here. How many sensors do we have spread to the borough? It, years ago, it was just on the old federal building, I think at the hospital in the borough building and one at North Pole or something, but how many sensors are we working with that, that that's giving us the data that they're tapping into? Mr. Fox, would you like to address that or? No, I prefer <laughs> Mr. Olds or, or yourself. I'm going to ask if you have uh, the most uh, recent information on that. I believe it's three, but Mr. Olds, would you like to chime in on this one? And it looks like you're muted. That was the problem. Yes, you are correct. There's three. Locations. I believe that's the federal building, uh, the borough building, and then uh, the North Pole Fire Station on Hearst. Yeah. Is that correct, Mr. Rolls? Yeah, A Street, Encore, and uh, Hearst, as I same parlance. Yes. Uh, we had violations on the downtown sensors, the two of them. In the last several years, Mr. Old, would you be able to address that violations uh, for the city of Fairbanks monitors? Yeah, yeah, certainly there have been exceedances um, at all monitors. When we got off the IM program, those monitors were utilized. <laughs> I think it was a period of five years before we could get out of the IM, yeah. and that they they had. Uh, had us in compliance. Um, was that, is that, is my memory correct on that? Is that how we got out of the IM program? It was at a five year monitoring uh, clean bill of health. That was before my time. I would have to double check on the timing um, as far as how long the maintenance status for IM was. Um, Juno is still on maintenance status for non attainment for PM from wood smoke. In the 80s, um, it can take some time. So, when we're in violation with the downtown sensors, is that 
still predominantly caused by wood smoke in the core. Um, if you take out wood smoke factoring, would, would any other factory trigger those to go into non-compliance? I'm asking a lot of questions here because I don't know the no, that's through the mechanics of it. <laughs> it's it's fine. I don't mean to turn this into an air quality meeting, but certainly I can answer whatever questions there are that I'm able to. Um, wildfires are something that we can um, provide for exceptional events, but those do cause exceedances certainly in the summertime. But it is primarily with smoke. I didn't get that. Uh, Mr. Olds, we list we missed the last part of your statement there. I'm sorry, uh, it is primarily wood smoke at all those monitors. Let's see if I can move this mic. Can you hear me now? I know. It's oh. summer, yes. I know in the summertime, if we have fires, we're going to be out of compliance, but I assume they take that into consideration. But my main concern is in the wintertime with the downtown core sensors the two sensors there if we're showing violations is it predominantly because of wood smoke in the area or other emissions do we know that yes we know it's predominantly wood smoke and do we have any idea what the percentage of that might be i believe it's 86 for the non-attainment area okay so I'm, I'm thinking when drafting the letter that, you know, the EPA is starting to get back into all these other items, which I think if you if you eliminated the wood smoke, they wouldn't be an item. Um, and I think we need to somehow explain to them that you know what the problem is, and it's a very high percentage, and that to go into these other areas um, will not be time well spent or money well spent that we need to focus on what the number one problem is. Um, my fear is that they 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 just throw a blanket out there and we've got to look at all these things, uh, all the power plants and everything else. And that's, that's just a nightmare. Um, and then I, I think that copies of these should very definitely go to the senators and our Congress uh, Congresswoman. Um, and have them starting to work with, with EPA on this. Al almost all this is regulatory. It's not in federal law. Is that right, Mr. Olds, or am I wrong on that? There is a lot of regulatory procedure that stems from the Clean Air Act. Um, but that PM25 implementation rule that we referred to, um, I believe this is 2016 promulgated rules it, that these stem from, and I don't know that um, there's great opportunities to address the regulations themselves at this point. Uh, we may have standing upon a final action. Um, I, I would think when you're putting this together, you'd probably rely on DEC for their input too, and yes. what will carry water with EPA or not. Maybe, I hope not, but if we get to the point where there's litigation and all this, I, I just hope we have the facts to back us up on that. So that, those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. I would Other second, discussion or debate? I would second those comments and add that, you know, um, unfortunately, the bane of my existence is this addressing other sources and not the 86% of the issue. Um, and that is something that we comment vociferously as often as we can. Um, and I don't know, based on precedent, that it has much impact on EPA's decisions for non-attainment areas across the country. Um, I mentioned earlier that there may be some transportation control measures rather than merely repeating the message of, um, you know, this is not a transportation issue. While we say that, we might also try and suggest or point to those more reasonable solutions that we can live with. Steer EPA, if we know they're headed down the tracks in a direction that we can live with and not merely object. 
certainly object. Um, and I think everybody I would encourage to do that as often as they can. Mr. Oh, I, in response to that comment um, in the letter, we can highlight um, the projects that we've funded over the years. Transportation projects that they're very quality. So, you know, including constructing the compressed natural gas fueling station, the new max transit maintenance facility, version of their buses, one more vehicle plugins. Um, some of that content is included in the state's implementation plan. Um, but we have built a lot more projects and funded a lot more projects since uh, 2019 when that plan was developed. So in the comment letter, I can highlight some of the other measures that we've been taking voluntarily uh, for the use of our air quality funding for our area. Are there discussion or debate on this item? And, and check question for Jackson on the uh, new federal proposal, regulation proposal to make the PM 2.5 in more stricter, we really, we do need to weigh in on that as, as well. I think that was implied, but That's absolutely. Um, some years ago, the municipal utility system, they tried to implement some water standards that were unobtainable. You just couldn't physically do it. And I remember back then the PUB board having to, to go, you know, what are you doing? And fortunately, those all fell by the wayside, but, um, I wonder when people write these rules if they understand the technology to try and achieve them and what it would cost to do it. Because um, it, sometimes it's, it's unreachable. So, uh, yeah, it's very important to have them stop moving the goalposts all the time. <clears throat> Further discussion, debate? <clears throat> Maybe add my comments into this. Um, you know, I think it's important to recognize that the the clean air standards that EPA promulgates are based on health impacts. I think there's pretty few folks out there that would argue that PM doesn't have some sort of uh, health impact on on folks. My main concern with the dis the partial disapproval of the SIP and then future regulations that are coming out with uh, promulgating out through EPA is that they don't provide a path for this community in specific to actually get to attainment. In fact, actually many of the measures that the EPA requires in their regulations for Fairbanks to implement um, would have a, a backsliding effect on our ability to actually meet attainment. And that screams to me of bad policy. It screams of bad regulations when you've got, um, I think, an issue that we all, most folks would, I'd say, want to resolve in the air quality issue in our community. But when we have to do these things, such as uh, power plant regulations at the cost of hundreds of millions of dollars, that don't necessarily do anything to actually address the majority of the issue to get us into compliance, but yet add additional cost to energy to the community, it's just gonna push us even further in the hole. So I, I think if, if fast planning can weigh in on this and provide comments in regards to how those measures are punitive and don't actually help get us to attainment, I think that can be very helpful. But there's certainly a need for EPA to be flexible with this community because what they currently have on the books will not get us into attainment. In fact, will actually destroy this community and, and wreck any hopes of an economy that we have in the future. So if that's their plan, if the plan is to get everyone out of Fairbanks, then we march on this road. But if this truly is a place where folks are going to live, which is my hope as the mayor, that that we need that flexibility uh, from the EPA and from our regulators and from our legislators to help us get on that path that gets us to attainment. So, Box, I'll get off of it. So, thank you. I got a lot of good news here. All right. Further discussion debate on our motion, which is to authorize Mr. Fox to draft up some letters in response to the Federal Register. Things, I'm not sure. What are we, official notice of decisions? All right, Mr. Uh, Mayor Welch. 
Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, yeah, I don't see any empirical data coming from EPA or none that I know that we've captured when it comes to what we do to that air quality from our motor vehicle traffic. Is there any such empirical data last year, last three years, last five years that would, would lead to us having that sort of thing imposed upon us, Jackson, or, or anyone know of any such data? Was that a question, Mayor Walsh? Yeah, that's a question. Is, any, is anyone aware? You know, we have to craft that in there too. In the absence of not having that kind of data, how can we have that imposed on us? So as I understood the question, the question is, is do we have in the emissions inventory, do we have a handle on how much emissions come from, from vehicles? Yes. As far as the contribution to the total emissions in our area? Right. Thank you. Yeah, and we, we do have that data from the Chilas Department of Environmental Conservation. Is that, as I understand, it's it's primarily modeled, not necessarily teased out from the uh, uh, the monitors that are out, uh, but there are um, calculated levels and percentages uh, for that, which I intend to highlight in the letter. Thank you. That's where I'm going. Thank you. So maybe just a comment to add to that. I think the the problem with the way that the regulations that they have are drafted is that there are only a handful of things that EPA regulates. Um, and, and air quality conformity through our transportation plan is one of them, um, as well as a handful of other things that they have listed in, in the, um, the Federal Register notice. And so the, the problem is we're bending over $100 bills to pick up pennies. And the, the pennies are, I mean, there is there a contribution to PM from, from automobiles in the airshed? I think the answer is yes. And we've got, I mean, that, that's, it would be maybe foolish to think otherwise, <laughs> but it's the percentage of the issue. Um, and, and the fact that we're literally bending over hundred dollar bills to pick up the pennies and not address the gorilla in the room, which is, you know, for our community, which is Woods Um And I, I know folks, you know, we've been in a little bit of denial over that for years, but, um, yeah, that that's what the data supports. So, uh, to me, that that's that's the issue here. Is um, EPA has very few tools, and the tools that they do have is what they plan on regulating. Um, they, but they're not going to get us into the tankments. The sad part about all this is that this organization builds roads, maintains roads. That's what we do. The vehicles could be a source of problem, but we can show statistically that they are not. Yet this is the vehicle, us, this organization, that will get penalized for a problem in which we really have no oversight, which is wood smoke. And, and it, to me, there's just an incredible disconnect there. But why, why should they be penalized by the government and to withhold dollars, which we have all contributed to, um, from this organization, which can do nothing to solve the primary problem that they're going after. Um, yeah. Mr. Rubin? Yeah, I, I think the big problem here is uh, I don't see how we're ever going to come into attainment. Um, as soon as we start getting close, they lower the numbers on us, you know, <clears throat> what smoke is the problem. And even the stuff that from what I've read that this organization has done as far as congestion mitigation uh, with automobiles and some of the proposed projects, like, for example, I think we were talking yesterday about the roundabout at West Valley High School. Um, <clears throat> just as a side note story, you know, when I was a young man, I used to work in a big pulp mill in, in California. And we had opacity meters on the stack, and it's driven by a big pulp or a paper mill, and those are big giant stacks. And oftentimes we couldn't come into compliance with EPA. No matter what we did, no matter what we tried to do with the boilers, we just couldn't come into compliance. So our solution to that was there was a giant metal door at the base of the stack that we propped open and put a piece of wood in there, sucked air into the stack, basically fooled the opacity meters. So we coined the phrase, the solution to pollution is dilution. 
So that's how I kind of see some of these traffic mitigation things. We haven't taken any cars off the road. We haven't done anything about what's being pumped into the air by the automobiles. We just simply fool the sensors by diluting pool. We just took a bunch of cars from a congested area and moved them out here. But we haven't done anything. The end result is we really haven't done anything. And it just drives me nuts that we're trying to come into compliance with these rules by diluting things. Now, if we can figure out what's. All right, further discussion, debate on this item. All right, Mr. Fox, if you call the roll on the uh, to have you draft some letters. Okay. Mr. Claymore. <laughs> yes. Mr. Cruz. Yes. Mr. Orderman. Yes. Mr. Old. Yes. Mayor Welch. Yes. Mayor Ward. Yes. All right, that's been approved. Do we have any other action items under new business item 8A? Not at this time. All right, I'm not seeing any. We will, our, our meeting was rearranged, so we're going to go back to item 7A under old business. This is FFY 202327 uh, TIP. This is an action item. Mr. Fox, do you want to give us an introduction? Yeah, this becomes on page 16 in the packet. Um, and again, I will apologize for including more or less the same media materials as last meeting uh, for this item and the next item. Um, but want to make note that our last policy board meeting was on uh, December 21st, and the public comment period for these documents ended on December 20th. And of course, we had sent out the meeting packet uh, the Friday before. Uh, so over the weekend and the Monday and Tuesday at the end of the public comment period, we did get new public comments in. Uh, for our transportation improvement program, as well as the metropolitan transportation plan. So I wanted to present to you all today the uh, the final compiled list of public comments for each of these documents. Uh, first one of which we're going to start with the transportation improvement program. Uh, but before I do, just want to make note that since the last time you saw our um, five-year funding plan, transportation improvement program, we've not made any changes to that, and the technical committee did not uh, request any further amendments, uh, even with the new public comment that was received. So. The project list on page 16 and 17 uh, in your packet is the same. Again, this, this project list shows you uh, which year uh, our, the projects that we're funding uh, will go to construction, as well as the year in which uh, some of our planning efforts and studies uh, will begin. Then on page 17 uh, shows you that we have three projects in the draft funding plan um, that are illustrative, which means these projects are included, uh, but there's no actual funding on them at this time. Uh, funding will be provided for these projects uh, should uh, fast planning receive additional federal funding for our area, um, or if we have a large project in our funding plan that its schedule slips. Say uh, Yankovic is a good example. That one has slipped over the years um, down the line due to uh, right away acquisition um, issues. Uh, so as things slip, we could potentially fund one of these illustrious projects. I think it is good practice to have a few, but not too many of these um, in, our, in our draft funding plan. But those are the three that we have at this time. Um, but now getting into the final public comment summary. Um, Corey, if you go to page 18, um, for the draft transportation approval program, we received a total of 117 comments. Um, 109 of these comments were made on our online interactive map. And then we received eight written comments that were sent to us uh, via email or uh, by written uh, letter. Um, we did do a quick um, kind of uh, word cloud or word search uh, for the comments that we provided. At the very top there, you can see some of the you know, projects that, that come out. Um, the project that was most commented on uh, was the proposed crosswalk in College Road. Uh, and then the second most project that was commented on was the FAST uh, Improvement Program, um, which talks about that crosswalk, but also the second one, the dog park and uh, repaving all the roads in Aztec subdivision. At uh, the bottom uh, pie chart there uh, just shows you that of all the comments that we received, um, in general, most of these comments, over 90% of them were in support of the projects that we had included in the funding plan. Um, with just a few uh, few comments uh, saying that they either don't support uh, one of the projects that are funding plan or they didn't know if they supported or didn't support. Uh, but on the next page, Corey, we did a 
We just pulled the four projects for which we received the most comment on. Again, the first one of which was College Road Crosswalk. Um, we had 38 comments on that. All 100% in support of that project moving forward. <clears throat> And then below that, we got seven comments on Pioneer Park, North parking lot, and boat launch, uh, all in support of that moving forward. And then the next page, uh, Holmes Road, uh, five comments in support of Holmes Road moving forward. And then uh, Yankovich and Miller Hill, um, seven, seven folks said that they supported the project, and one person said they did not support the project. Uh, and that comment was related to uh, the latest design, which is widening the road with shoulders as opposed to having a separated uh, path along Yankovich. Um, the summary of um, the comments we received for the interactive map are found in the packages or in the meeting packet uh, from pages 21 through 27. As you can see on the interactive map, um, we uh, on the map it it uh, geographically showed all the projects that we have in our funding plan. So. Um, you know, for example, like on Lacey Street, it shows the Termini for Lacey Street and that road is highlighted. And you click on that road project, and then you indicate it's a short survey whether or not you support the project. If you don't, uh, if you do not support the project, why don't you support the project? And then we ask if there was any concerns uh, that folks had with that project that should be um, should be addressed in the design of that project. And so, again, <clears throat> the overall summary of this is that. The majority of comments that we received were in support of these projects. Um, none of the comments that we received uh, resulted in any direct change to the funding plan since it was over 90% simply supporting the plan. And then on page 28, uh, this shows you the written comments that we received uh, via email. There in a second. There we go. Um, so we, we did receive a, a few emails. Uh, one of them are by one of our members on our bike advisory committee. Um, uh, concerned about the, the cost of uh, Mini Street um, uh, and uh, but in general support for the Fast Improvement Program, the Guys Team Fund Road Corridor Study. Um, also, um, uh, written, written comments in support of the Pioneer Park Road parking lot, boat launch from a variety of folks. Uh, behind these written comments, as I indicated, we did also receive a few letters uh, that were submitted as comments. Um, so on pages 29 and 30, uh, we have a um, letter of support uh, from the Chena Riverfront Commission for the Pioneer Park North parking lot boat launch. And then on page 31, we have another letter of support for the Pioneer Park North parking lot boat launch uh, from Bettisworth North on the local architecture firm. And then pages 32 and 33, uh, we have a letter of support from Fairbanks Paddlers, the Pioneer Park North parking lot boat launch. And then the last letter we received is on page 34 from the Fairbanks Cycle Club, uh, expressing their support uh, for a variety of uh, non-motorized projects that we have in the funding plan. So the funding plan, um, as was presented to you last time, begins on page uh, 35 in your packet. And um, we can stop there for this section of the meeting packet. Uh, but again, just to note that for this funding plan for the next five years, um, we have not made any changes to this funding plan since our meeting last month. Uh, so this should look the same. Um, as I stated during my, my staff report and the initial air quality item, uh, we are hoping to uh, postpone uh, today's approval of this, this document until um, we can bring forward the air quality quality analysis to approve alongside this at next month's meeting. Uh, so. Uh, the action item here today is to uh, discuss any further uh, amendments uh, that all board members would like to see this funding plan before I bring it back next month. Um, and just of note, during my staff report, I mentioned that the technical committee uh, specifically asked uh, the policy board at today's meeting uh, to discuss uh, the future of the Barnett Street reconstruction project, whether or not we want to um, include that back in this funding plan because it has been left out at this time. Um, so I'll stop there if there's any questions, but hoping for some discussion on Barnett and uh, look forward to any other further amendments you'd like to see. Questions for Mr. Fox on the tip before we do our public comment. Well, I don't know if this is under what you're thinking of, but we just went through comments and one of them the most we had comments on was 38 on the College Road crosswalk. 
Has anyone contacted the farmer's market? How much real estate do they have? They, they have a parking problem that we're looking at and providing a solution maybe for just putting a crosswalk in. Has anyone contacted them to see if they've ever thought about justifying their operations to the north and where they have their operations now making that parking? <laughs> So yeah, a couple of months ago, um, uh, we had a meeting with the director of the farmers market. Um, in attendance to that meeting, we also had uh, Stan Fletcher, uh, which was a policy board member at that time. Um, the uh, two Alaska DOT folks that were working with the design of that crosswalk over at DOT, um, as well as uh, fast planning staff. Um, our communications from the farmers market director was that they are um, in the process of leasing property across the road from the farmer's market uh, to expand uh, parking. Uh, this past year, they've had uh, record numbers of attendees come to the farmer's market uh, when, they're, when they're open. And they said, they stated that they did explore options to expand their parking area uh, both um, behind them, I guess, yeah, that would be to the, to the north. Uh, but could not come to any type of agreement uh, with that property owner to extract to the north of their facility. So right now they they believe the most viable solution is to lease property uh, across the roadway there. Um, also, we side that side there. Yep, that okay. side there along the roadway. Um, and I. I I believe that if they were to lease that parcel, they could get up to 75 million parking spaces for the farmer's market. I believe that was a number that they had, they had estimated. Um, <clears throat> also in conjunction with this, last summer, we did install new bus pullouts uh, on either side of the road at this, at this location. We, we have the, I don't know exactly what they own there. You have the structure there at the Northern point, but they also own the property to the left. That right there. Yeah, I believe they do. Yes. So I believe that's that looks like we're incredible parking. I don't know uh, if those trees still exist or if they've explored. Well, well it's, a, it's an incredible area. parking area for them. Area. So that they, they own that. They own that. I believe they do. Yes. Excuse me while I look dumbfounded. You're looking at a crosswalk when they have all the parking they need right there. Yeah, that would happen. Does anyone have that discussion with them? Not about that spot. Okay. That did not come up here with me. I need to show. Okay. I'll call in there. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Enjoy that. <clears throat> I, I just looked at that and say, there's a solution right there. We don't have to cross people with a crosswalk. That's probably the most safest thing to do is have them park on their own property right there. No matter what, you have a crosswalk. You have a three, five mile and a 40 mile hour, two different directions with people crossing it. And four, four times a month, 16 times a summer. We're we're at questions. We haven't got to debate okay. yet. So okay. Uh, okay. just just he's just, my mind, he's just questioning. Yeah, I'm questioning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. I'm questioning. <laughs> Do we have additional questions on the tip before we uh, get to potentially making some motions? <laughs> I do have a question, uh, Mr. Fox. The illustrative projects that we have in the tip. Um, so we have, we're just talking about the federal register and the notice of decision is to the SIP. If the SIP is disapproved, then there is a, we, we start a period where the tip is frozen, correct? That's correct. So what are we looking at for these projects that are currently illustrative in the tip? Um, should we approve the tip to this week or next month or today or next month? Um, what kind of timelines do we look at to be able to move these projects from illustrative into the program before that tip is frozen? Um, so when the, I guess just for background here is that when we do go into a conformity freeze as a result of the EPA actions, um, it, it does freeze our funding. It doesn't necessarily mean that we can't 
continue to utilize our funding to keep projects going, uh, but we'll, we will not be able to amend our funding plan. So these illustrative projects that are included in there, if we are underneath the conformity freeze, um, we wouldn't be able to amend our TIP to add funding to this project uh, should we receive additional funding or we have a project schedule slide. Uh, it would take an amendment the transcription permit program to provide funding for these. So um, we should be uh, um, aware of a, a future date. It might be a year from now when the conformity freeze takes effect, uh, but we should try to get ahead of that to start say one of these projects before that conformity freeze um, begins, because if they're not started before the freeze begins or included in our funding plan with real money on them, um, again, we won't be able to amend our funding plan to provide funding in the future should uh, some additional funding uh, come to our organization. Does that help answer your question? Or... So if it, if it, I think Mr. Old said earlier uh, on another discussion item that it was it maybe would be a year to hear back from the East, from EPA on a final decision. Yes. When that's published is when the, the tip freezes. So we would have maybe a year Correct. to do something with these. Yes. Okay. Yep. I did, I did have the prospect of okay. the uncertainty of the lawsuit. That's absent the lawsuit with in that, an expedited time frame. Yeah. With that caveat. Okay. All right, um, I'm not seeing any other questions uh, for Mr. Fox in regards to the tip. So at this time, um, we will take public comment. Do we have any members of the public that wish to give comment on the tip at this time? I don't see anyone in the room. Do we have anyone online? Chairman, this is uh, Peter Stern. I'd like to uh, make some comments. Um, I did submit some um, via the public comment period, but I'd like to just expand on uh, on one of them. And it's in regard to the Fast Improvement Program, which is an important program. It's a popular program. It deals with smaller projects, uh, but 20% of the uh, funds are supposed to be used for non-motorized projects. And uh, that's really important. Um, I've done uh, an inspection of most of the separated paths uh, in the Fast area, and every one of them has damage to it that is gonna require repair. And that includes projects that are as new as the Chena pump um, path. And we fast recently made a request to DOT to do some significant repairs on the farmer's loop path. And DOT's response was they don't have any money to do that. And so the suggestion was that um, fast, you know, put it as part of their uh, improvement program. A lot of the projects are not huge dollar projects. And so as a result, in order to get um, contractors interested in bidding on them, they need to be bundled together to reach basically a million dollar threshold. And, um, and so you know that's the way we're gonna be able to keep getting uh, repairs done to these paths all over the borough. Um, the problem is that in this tip, um, there is no money uh, for the fast improvement program for the, the year 2027. Uh, the money that had been there was removed and put toward the mini street project. And so with all the talk of these um, potential freezes for the tip and, uh, and uh, making it difficult to move money around, I think that the either in this tip, it needs to be amended or in a future amendment to the tip, money needs to be put back into the fast improvement program for the for the year 2027. Thank you. Mr. Stern, do we have any questions? I'm not seeing any. Thank you for your testimony today. Do we have any other members of the public that wish to provide testimony on the tip? I'm not seeing any. So at this time, uh, the floor is open for motions. Uh, we did have a recommendation from staff uh, on uh, officially taking action on this next month, um, but we can certainly take up motions to amend at this time if there is a desire to do so. There is no motion on the floor yet for the tip, is there? No, and I don't necessarily know if we need a motion to approve. We can probably, uh, we can take that up. I think we do. We, I would, what I'm hoping to do is 
put it on the floor. There's amendments, make the amendments, and then postpone it to the next meeting because then we can see if we get the, the magic letter. Uh, okay. Bill, but I'd like to make that motion. Um, I move that we approve the uh, the tip as presented. So moved by Mr. Cleworth, uh, second by Mr. Roderman. Discussion? Debate? Mr. Cleworth? Yeah, uh, Peter, to follow up with what you said, and if you ever wonder if we read your comments, we definitely do. And uh, sometime I, I hope to talk to you and come to the PED committee because some of the ideas I have, I think, are quite contrary to what others are, but I think we're heading the same way. Um, mm -hmm. The fast improvement program is, I think you're absolutely right, is the most important thing we do because it can actually get a lot of little projects done. The big projects come along, they tend to take away almost all the money uh, at the time. It's just, and we only have so much money to play with. But um, just just speaking to you on that, one of my big problems has been like Yankovic Road, which is in here. I think it's trying to compete with Third Street over there for the longest project I've ever seen. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the bicycle path. And I have long been a proponent of, of incorporating them onto the roadway itself with a buffered area for the bicyclists. Um, that way, you, winter maintenance is done on a schedule. You can take the blades, whether it's the city or DOT, and you can clean those roads quickly and efficiently. You don't have the danger of a separated bike path, which people who go over them, residences, uh, residential uh, property and that sort of thing, they don't look both ways on the bike path as they do on the road itself sometimes. And also the bike paths compete, motorized vehicles with bicyclists and walkers and everything else. And you wouldn't see as much of that if it were on the road. So, you know, if I had my way and were king for a day, which will probably never happen, I would hope that in the future, fast planning always incorporates the bike paths into the roadways themselves. It's, I think, safer. And when I see the serious bicyclists uh, doing that already on some of the downtown streets, using the wide roads we have, like on First Avenue, I think there's real proof as to what works and what can uh, I think work efficiently. So anyway, I, I want to talk to you more about that You know, later on. Um, taking up the technical committee's uh, recommended amendment regarding Barnett Street, um, just a question first for Jackson. Were they talking about including it as an illustrious program or what What was their thought at the time? Uh, so they, they uh, I guess to repeat some of the comments that were made at the technical committee um, was that if you look at this funding plan in front of you here, we're looking at approximately a 10 year horizon. I've, I've projected it out out to 10 years so that you can see every project that we start, what year will end up going to construction, even if it's beyond the five-year term of our funding plan. Um, and the comments were that, you know, Barnett Street uh, was a project that was nominated to us um, 10 or more years ago, very high scoring project. Um, it was included in previous plans as illustrative. Uh, at one time during our last, um, our last four-year transportation program, we actually did provide funding to initiators, design stars. Uh, for that for that project to get it underway. A um, couple of things had happened at that time, uh, one of which was, and I, I did go through all the action items from 2020 when this occurred to uh, be able to accurately present this to you all today, but it was at the time where McGrath Road, the large uh, construction contract sheet orders were hitting us. We were looking for some additional funding to pay for those because I had to delay some projects. Um, in the funding plan options, when we were looking for money for McGrath, um, it was one of the options was to uh, take that design start, which is about a million dollars for Barnett Street, uh, take that money, use it for McGrath and other projects. And the motion that was that was made back in August 2020 was uh, to remove the Barnett Street reconstruction project from the uh, current transportation improvement program and grandfathered into the next transportation improvement program, which is before you here. Uh, if the city has completed the design of the project without fast planning funds, 
because the secondary concern with Barnett Street was that based on the latest estimate at the time, which was from 2019, that um, the design of this project would cost about would cost over $2 million and the construction of the project would be over 15. So you're looking at about $17 million to come up with to reconstruct Barnett. And um, at that time, we were getting eight to nine million dollars per year, so it would take up two two full years of all the federal funding that we received with that to construction. So, um, in our mind, it was a mega project, and we ha had to back off um, uh, from that. Uh, but then, looking at our our latest funding plan here, uh, based on the, the direction I had from two years ago, it's not included in the funding plan at this time, and so. The question that the technical company was, well, this is a very important project for our community. There's a lot of vehicles that use that road each day. And so what is the fate of that? Should we add it back in um, as an illustrative project um, or change it out with one of these projects? Uh, but, you know, does Barnett Street have greater importance than some of the other things that they're providing money for? So the technical committee was hoping for a discussion amongst policy board members today. And uh, perhaps uh, some some thought into uh, how we can get it back in the queue, so to speak. Okay, thank you for that update. Um, when you have, I mean, I look at Lacey Street here; it's illustrative, and we're spending money on design of that right now. It it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to put money into to design for something that's not going to happen um, for many many years. But scoping a project is a different story. Uh, you don't have to come up with the design. You can say, you know, what are we envisioning here? Well, we're just going to do a, some drainage, some pavement, some sidewalks, call it a day. Or we're going to get a lot fancier than that and do a project. Um, it would not take a lot of money to scope a project just using some basic outlines, not designing it. Having a million dollars is is way, it's way too high for, for something that's illustrative. But I agree with technical. I should go back. I I think as an illustrative project, and we can talk about the scope of of looking at some cost estimates later. But you know the idea. Okay, we want to do this, and city, we want you to pay for it. Of course, we're I'm balking a bit of that, uh, but I'm also balking at the million dollars you just said. We can do it for a lot cheaper than that, and I think it can be funded somehow, some way. It doesn't need to be instantaneous. It could be in the next several years. You can look at it and look at a very basic scoping of it and seeing what that cost of estimate is going to be. So, um, I, I guess what I would be working on. We've Bob Pristash is on the line. I know also if we want to use him as a as a resource, but uh, I wouldn't mind putting this back in and as an illustrative project. Even though I think Mary said you don't want many illustrative projects in there, but um, I think it was your staff that actually recommended it coming back. So that's nice. Appreciate that. Um, I would make a motion that we include uh, Barnett Street as an illustrative project in the draft EIP. So moved by Mr. Cleaver. Second. Second by Mr. Rudman. Discussion? Clearly? No, I, I would just, you know, maybe we could have Bob, you know, check in here and, and say if I said anything wrong, but I I think the scoping could be done a lot simpler than I think what was envisioned a year or two ago and, and see if he agrees or disagrees with that. So if he's on Mr. the line. Stash, are you available? Yes, I'm I'm on the line. I'm on the line. Can can you hear me? Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, Barnett Street, um, the, the original estimate, like Jackson was saying, was around 15 million and a $2 million design. I'm not exactly sure of um, the concept, the design concept, the concept that generated that estimate. But I would um, think that given the environment we have now, we could look at rescoping the project and possibly phasing its construction and even um, as part of its design. You know, Barnett, um, like Cushman, maybe reduce it to two lanes, remove the parking from both sides, widen the sidewalk, 
wide shoulders for bike paths on both sides and look at the signalization and possibly reduce signalization. And some utility work. Uh, last summer, we did uh, storm, uh, sewer and some storm drain work from second to fourth already. And that was at a cost of about $300,000. So uh, some of the utility work that was uh, included in that original $15 million design has been done. And maybe more can be done as advanced construct and, and chip away at the project. If the project was, uh, let's say, it was like the concept would be two lanes to the south, you could start in the north, run down to 7th Avenue, and then um, with paint, uh, go down to Airport Way. So there, there, there's ways to look at it, and I would suggest maybe that the city could possibly rescope the project uh, you know, for a review of the stakeholders. And that rescoping be done, you know, with uh, a, a, under advanced project definition funding, you know, around for $30,000. And I think everything Mr. Cleaver said is, is, is pretty much uh, in line. I think we could come up with better numbers in the next month, too. So I, I guess the motion at this yeah, time think, is just to put it in without a dollar amount attached, and we can attach it at the next meeting. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> motion on the floor is to uh, re add uh, Barnett Street under Illustrative in the tip. Discussion, debate. All right, uh, maybe I'll just add my comments. Um, my comments earlier, I didn't mean to say that I uh, think we should have a, a small list of illustrative projects. I think illustrative is a tool that we have to ensure the stuff gets programmed. My concern was understanding the interplay with the conformity yeah. trees and how we're actually able to move those projects forward. So. Um, I, I think if we don't have a construction phase, then it still leaves us a bit of a quandary as to how we move these things forward. But I, I don't have an issue with it going in and as illustrative. And if the city can do some of that scoping work to, to rethink the project, I think that's great. I know there's been discussions in the past about um, phasing, like Mr. Pristash had said, or even uh, doing smaller like mill and pave jobs to address the sidewalks and the striping and and things like that. So um, yeah, I don't have any issue with it being put back into the tip. Um, and I think it's a project that needs to get funded, but it's certainly, I, I think a mega project is a good term for it because it certainly exceeds our ability to be able to provide the resources to get this thing moved any time quickly. Yeah. All right, further discussion debate. I'm not seeing any, Mr. Fox, if you call the roll on inserting this into the tip. Good. Mr. Clearer? Yes. Mayor Cruz? Yes. Mayor Ward? Yes. Mr. Rodeman? Yes. Mayor Welton? Yes. Mr. Holtz? Yes. All right, that motion's been approved. Back to the main motion as amended. Further discussion? All right. Um, I would maybe remind folks that if we do want to postpone this action, probably need a motion to do such. Um, I, would, I would make the motion postponed to the next meeting. So moved Second. by Mr. Cleworth. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Rodeman. Uh, any discussion on postponement? All right. I'm not seeing any. Mr. Fox, if you call the roll on postponement. Yeah, Mr. Cleworth. Yes. Mayor Cruz? Yes. Mayor Rodeman? Yes. Mayor Ward? Yes. Mayor Welch? Yes. Mr. Owens? Yes. All right, that item has been postponed to our next meeting. That brings us to old business item 7B, our 2045 MTP update. This is an action item. Mr. Fox, you can start us off. Yeah, sorry. We'll have to go to page 83. Okay, so similar to the uh, transportation improvement program document, um, we have a, a comment summary uh, prepared for the comments received on our 2045 left section transportation plan update. Um, again, this this document differs from the previous one, and that this document includes uh, 
all of the projects we uh, hope to construct on our transportation network over a 20 year planning horizon. So it's a much longer uh, project list broken out uh, by short range projects, zero to five years out, uh, medium range projects, which are about five to 12 years out, uh, and then long range projects uh, out to that 20 year planning horizon. Um, we did receive a total of 147 comments um, on this plan update. Uh, many of which uh, were included on an interactive map that we prepared uh, showing all of the projects over the next 20 years uh, to be uh, funded through fast planning and the Alaska State DOT. So there wasn't an interactive map, uh, but also we did receive a handful of uh, emailed uh, comments as well as comment uh, letters uh, on this. Um, all of the comments that are included in the summary with the exception of three, um, comment summary runs from pages uh, 83 all the way to 100 and get to the end of it, to 104. Uh, so all 147 with, except three um, have been, um, uh, have, uh, have a response uh, for each one of these. Uh, many of these comments uh, did result in uh, changes uh, to this document. Um, I, and I again want to thank uh, Don Galligan for us the planning department for doing a thorough review uh, of the document and the project list, uh, as well as a further review done by uh, Randy Bailey at DOT Planning um, on the documents and the uh, project list. The majority of the comments that you've seen here are from those internal staff reviews, uh, though we did receive you know, a handful of comments uh, from the public uh, at large. Uh, you can see the action taken. Um, the version of, the, of this document that's in the packet here today does include uh, all the revisions uh, that were made based on these public comments uh, that were received. Uh, the three comments that we still have yet to address, they are all minor in nature um, and will be made to the document uh, following this meeting. Uh, the first comment that's yet to be addressed is on page 91 uh, with relation to the fast improvement program. Uh, the project list simply had that shown in the medium range project category, but we want to show the fast improvement program um, being implemented in short, medium, long, and very long range categories. So uh, that will be added to the project list. <laughs> And then on page 99 at the top, um, you'll see that there was some uh, public comments on the needs assessment uh, chapter of this plan uh, related to uh, needs for uh, bicyclists and pedestrians. Uh, just adding a couple bullets to the need assessments uh, in relation to year round maintenance um, of our sidewalks and paths, um, as well as uh, potentially uh, hosting a public reporting map system uh, for. Uh, uh, problems or issues that arise on our paths and sidewalks during the summer and winter months. So just a couple of bullets to add to the need assessment there, which we think are a reasonable update the plan with those. Um, in addition to these comments on page 105, uh, we also received a letter from the Fairbank Cycle Club um, highlighting, again, their support uh, for the non-motorized uh, transportation projects that we have included in this plan. And then behind that is the, the document itself um, and again, this really the main focus of this document is uh, is for policy board members to take a look at is the uh, project list, which begins on page 131, which lists out all the projects um, that again fast planning and the Alaska DOT intend to fund uh, over the short range, medium range, uh, long range, and very long range. Um, uh, so this is kind of the most important section of this document. I think that's that's worth uh, taking a look at. Uh, but as stated during the staff report, the previous item, um, I am asking for postponement of approval of this document until next month, uh, so that we can sync it up with approval of the air quality performing analysis uh, on uh, which uh, directly relates to uh, all the projects that are included on this list. That was going to approve both of those at the same time next month. Uh, but I am happy to entertain some amendments to the project with only policy board members uh, at today's meeting so that we can make those changes uh, as well our next meeting um, and the policy board would consider approval of this spot All right, thank you, Mr. Fox. Do we have any questions? All right, I don't see any online or in the room. We will go to public comment. Do we have any members of the public who wish to provide comment on the MTP? I'm not seeing any online and nor in the room here. 
So that brings us to our policy board. Uh, do we have a motion on the MTP? We're going to move that we adopt the MTP. So presented by Mr. Cleaver. Yes. Second by Mr. Rodovan. Discussion? Cleaver? Just one for my edification here. Um, on page 134, it talks about the Santa Claus Lane Bicycle Facilities, and it says add buffered bicycle lanes. I think I know what that means, but um, I would like to know for sure what that means. Um, what is a buffered bicycle lane? So a, a buffered bicycle lane would, would not be a traditional road shoulder. There would have to be some type of barrier between the travel lane and the uh, and that bike lane that would be on a shoulder. And that's done in a variety of ways. A median strip, um, or as we see more commonly in the lower 48, there's a reflective post that they put on there that the vehicles can drive over, but some type of uh, uh, physical uh, barrier between the cyclist and the motorist. And it could be you know, physical separation or actual vertical infrastructure. And I cannot uh, tell you at this time uh, where that project idea originated from. <clears throat> it's likely been in this document for um, the last time editions. In Soldatna, one time I saw um, a major road coming into town and to the right of you was a segment of pavement where they had a cross patch pattern and like a caution sign, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the other side of it, they had the bicycle path. There was no physical, you know, Things separating them, except there was a lot of space separating them. And again, doing doing maintenance on that, and especially in the winter time, if you were doing a bike path, it was so easy to do. But there is a lot of distance between the the main road and that path. But it would still be less distance than doing a separated bike path, I think. But anyway, I was just curious on that because it kind of intrigued me. The other part is on the same page: gravel the pavement. If there's one thing I think that, as I've mentioned before, we do is make roads. And anytime we get a chance to take gravel roads and make them the pavement, I, I think we should should take it. Um, it just, I know a lot of the businesses in South Fairbanks mm -hmm. with their computers and the constantly fighting the dust. And uh, you have to be there and hear their concerns to, to appreciate them. But, It'd be nice, I'm gonna think about this a little bit more. It'd be nice to see if we could somehow not make that in the medium range, but move that up somehow in the future. Um, anyway, those are my only two comments. I don't have any amendments. Can I make a comment or suggestion? Sure. Related to the uh, last motion that was passed with regard to Barnett Street. Um, so the, um, it's not a very good word, it's consequence. If we uh, put Barnett Street reconstruction project back into our transportation improvement program as a illustrative project, that means we have intention to get that started in the short range. And so this can be a motion, um, or you could just have the understanding that I will be moving Barnett Street uh, into the short range category as a result of the last motion that was made on the previous talk. <laughs> I'm making a motion. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. All right. Uh, so moved by Mayor Pruz to make Barnett Street reconstruction MR49 into a short range project. Appropriately numbered. Uh, is there a second? A second. Second by Mr. Cleaver. Discussion on that motion. I am not seeing any. Mr. Fox, do you call the roll? Okay, Mayor Pruz. Yes. Hayward. Yes. Mr. Rodeman. Yes. Mayor Ward. Yes. Mayor Welsh. Yes. Mr. Olds. Yes. All right, it's been approved. Back to our main motion as amended. Further discussion or debate? Oh, I'm, I moved. To, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not picking up your cue here. No, um, maybe if I could before you okay. make that uh, motion. Uh, on the Santa Claus Lane bike facilities, I, I would be interested to know 
uh, from Mayor Welch, if that's something that's on his radar. Um, I'm pretty familiar with the North Pole area, as I know he is. And I am, I'm not aware where this particular item came from. In fact, those shoulders are very, very wide already. They are very slow wide. Speeds. Are you talking so about I, I just, the, uh, am I coming through there, Mr. Mayor? Yes, we can hear you. Are you talking about the Santa Claus Lane bicycle facility having it buffered? Is that what you're talking about? No, MR47 is Santa Claus Lane bike facilities. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, MR47. Mm -hmm. I don't right, know. In, in the project description, it says add buffered bicycle lanes. And I was just wondering if you were aware of where that particular project came from. I do not know where that came from, but I do understand why they might want to have a buffer on it because there's so many families trying to ride bicycles up and down the main thoroughfare in the city, they might just want to be buffered in that, in that regard just for a safety factor. It's the only thing I can figure, but I don't know where it came from. It did not come from me. Fair it's about 1.2, 1.3 miles long from the Richardson to Fifth Avenue. Discussion debate. It's interesting. It just appeared. Mr. Cleaver, did you have a motion for us? Yeah. Um, well, maybe between now and the next month, if, if this isn't a project that should be on here, maybe we should take it off. But uh, I'll rely on the mayor of North Pole and the former mayor of North Pole to come up with that idea. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead and move that we postpone this to the next meeting. So moved by Mr. Cleaver. Second by Welch. Second by Mr. Roman. Um, do we have any discussion or debate on postponement to the next meeting? I'm not seeing any. Mr. Fox, if you would call the roll. Yeah, Mr. Cleaver. Yes. Mayor Bruce? Yes. Mr. Rutherford? Yes. Mayor Ward? Yes. Mayor Welch? Yes. Mayor Holmes? Yes. All right, that's been approved. So we will now go to old business item 7C, call for project nominations for congestion mitigation and air quality and carbon reduction program. Mr. Fox, if you would, please. Yeah, Tori, here's the page one point. Go. Um, this is just an informational item here today. As I stated during my staff report, uh, we do have an open call for project nomination past planning. Uh, this, this call for nominations is specific to transportation projects that improve air quality. Um, and it is the funding that we have available is approximately $3 million uh, per year of congestion mitigation and air quality funding uh, and our new carbon reduction program uh, funds uh, that have been made available to us through the new Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. So the schedule is, is highlighted here on the screen. Um, we are accepting uh, project nominations uh, through February 17th, um, after which time, once we receive uh, those project nominations, we will transmit those to the uh, Alaska Division Federal Highway Administration Office uh, to do a thorough uh, project eligibility review for each nomination received um, in comparison to the funds that we have for those projects. And then in early March, um, we will task our technical committee uh, members with scoring those projects. As well as concurrently, uh, we will be hiring um, uh, Tom Carlson of Trinity Consultants to perform the third party emission reduction calculations for each of those projects. And uh, toward the end of March, we will then develop a funding plan based on the outcome of those scores uh, to present the technical committee of policy for April for approval. Uh, approval on any amendments that you'd like to, to see to that. Uh, but included in your packet, uh, if you haven't seen this yet, uh, our project scoring criteria, which was Revisions were approved at last month's meeting on pages 141 and 142. And then uh, beginning on page 143, you can see the um, uh, product nomination form that we have posted online. Um, and behind that, for if you go to page uh, 154, um, you'll see the funds that we have available for this. Um, 
all the product combinations. Again, we have two two fund categories that we specifically have to use these funds on transportation projects that can show air quality improvements for our area. So just over two million dollars per year uh, for the congestion mitigation and air quality funds uh, to be spent within the PM two point five non attainment area. And projects nominated to us have to demonstrate a reduction in PM two point five emissions. And then for the new carbon reduction program, we have approximately one million dollars a year. Um, these funds can only be spent within our uh, planning area boundary. Must focus on carbon dioxide emissions. On the next page, uh, you'll see a map that shows the difference between these two boundaries. Uh, the PM2.5 non-green area boundary is that yellow boundary. Inside that teal color, or planning area boundary. So we can spend um, uh, <laughs> just over 2 million anywhere in the yellow box, and then up to 1 million anywhere in the planning area box. But of course, uh, we could, could spend all 3 million in that uh, And I'll kind of spare you going through some of the project eligibilities, uh, but just to note that we did hold a applicant workshop yesterday uh, in our office, and we did have about 13 people in attendance. We have folks from UAF, uh, GOT, Borough Planning, Borough Parks and Rec, uh, City of North Pole, City of Fairbanks, uh, all in attendance uh, to learn more about our project eligibility for the program. Um, and during that uh, workshop, we did do a a brainstorming session to see what ideas folks had. Um, we don't necessarily need to show the mural board at this time, but just rattling off a few off my head here. Um, there's interest in a, a roundabout at West Valley, not on Geist Grove, but on their, the interior circulation roads for West Valley High School. Uh, UAF is interested in converting their shuttle bus fleet to press natural gas. Um, Max Transit and UAF are both interested in. A previous program that we funded where we provide uh, free transit rides uh, for all UAF students and faculty at the campus there. So a large group of over 8,000 folks uh, get free transit rides. We provide funding to comp those transit rides. Um, an electric vehicle charging station at the Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center. Uh, possibly an electric vehicle charging station at the at downtown parking garage and expansion of the bike storage facilities there as well as um, the downtown wayfinding signs for the parking garage that will be installed around the block of that facility. Corey, do you have if there are a few others you could rattle off there? Not remembering all of them, but I'm just pull this up real quick. Thank you for getting it. So really just the interest item. We'll see what actually gets submitted to us, but just so you have an idea of the types of projects we will are, are thinking about. Oh, possibly a roundabout at uh, First Avenue and Wilbur Street from the Carlson Center. Um, so for uh, transit in particular, uh, cell phone application for receiving payments, uh, tracking your bus and bus schedules. So it'd be a software purchase. Uh, wayfinding signs out at the airport along the new path that was constructed last summer. Uh, motor vehicle plugins at North Pole City Hall. We won't talk about the diesel IM program. That's there. <laughs> well, I do want to keep my job. <laughs> oh, so also some. I think we can actually use some of this funding uh, to uh, do the planning study for the new. Um, a potentially new connection to the lakes to Chingley Treasury. One of our funding sources is eligible uh, to be used because it, it's not only about the new trail connection on that side, but it's eliminating a lot of out of direction vehicle travel. If you have a new entrance on the Chingley. So, in any event, uh, there's a few different ideas that were shared and um, by the time we have our next meeting, I can provide you all a list of everything that's, that was actually nominated for our office. A question to yeah. Jackson, if I could. At the last meeting, we saw CMAC funds and that long discussion on that that I brought up. Um, are those projects that we saw in the last packet sunsetted or funded or done with, or are they carrying through on to this so order? So over 50% over are funded and behind us. Um, 
uh, some going to construction here this uh, coming summer. Uh, we do have a few obligations out to 24 and 25 for some of those funds, but not all of the funds. So as we develop our funding plan for these these two fund categories, we will we will take into account the existing projects that were nominated to us. So those are the projects that we have not funded yet will, will remain in that plan and we will simply add in the new projects because I ran that over a 10 year horizon. So none of those will block. Thank you. Right, Bruce. I, I just find it ironic and I wish you the best on this that you have a perfectly designed program to reduce 2.5 carbon reduction emissions. Mm -hmm. And that's number 8A, yet 7C, they want to take that funding away from you. And you can okay. incorporate that into your letter to them. I, well, I believe this funding would be exempt. Uh, these are exempt. Our, that's our, that's our, that's our other funding. Yeah. <laughs> Good. But in our letter, we do want to show what we're doing here locally yeah. uh, with the funds that we'll receive on air quality. So. Good. Thank you. Mr. Roman, as a newbie question, <clears throat> these funds, if they're not used within a certain time period, do they go away? Do they roll forward? How does that work? So, you know, we get $3 million a year. Right. These sort so of projects, if we don't use that, is it use or lose or just roll forward? It is use or lose. However, I have a three year window to be able to. So, if we're looking at, say, uh, last year's dollars, which we haven't even spent all of them yet. I have until 2025 to spend those. Okay. So I've got a three year window to spend. But my intention is to have every penny of this funding spent in our community period and not lose any of these funds. Okay. But yes, if for some reason we did not spend any, it would go it goes turn to the federal government. And then during, they call it August redistribution, uh, it could be sent to a different state in another community if we don't use it. But I not let that happen today. I don't intend to let that happen in the future. Not. Unless we're in a conformity period, we're not going to All right. Other questions on the call for nominations? All right. I'm not seeing any, so we'll move on on our agenda. That goes to what brings us to um, other issues as we address AD first. Uh, we have no other issues. Informational items. The first item under informational items is the IAGA update. Mr. Fox? Yeah, I can do this real quick. So beginning on page 172, uh, at the very, very end of December, the U.S. Census Bureau uh, announced the 2020 census qualifying urbanized areas um, across the United States. I'm happy to say that we stayed on the list. Um, Corey Peeler, page 175. You'll see Fairbanks on the bottom there. So, um, so we have maintained our urbanized area designation, uh, which also maintains the um, the funding that we received. Uh, we did experience this in the only area in this new Census Bureau determination for urbanized area, um, a decent population increase, which was directly attributed to U.S. Census Bureau expanding our boundary. We have uh, uh, Corey, if you go to page one seventy seven. We can kind of see a comparison from the 2000 to 2010 to 2020 census there. Um, in this last round here, uh, we've gained 10% population for our urbanized area, but our urbanized area uh, grew by uh, grew by 26%. And this is a boundary that the Census Bureau draws for us based on densely settled census blocks um, in our in our region here. The other thing to note on this page here is that the Matsu area uh, did cross the threshold, become the third urbanized area in the state. Uh, so uh, in one way or another, we will be competing for funds with the new Matsu area. Um, however, that area will come out of a rural category, come into our urban category, so we'll be bringing funding with them. Uh, but as you can see, the urbanized area population comparison between Fairbanks and the Matsu area, we've got about 20,000 more population in our area, so we will still uh, we'll get you know well over half of the funding in our population category based on the numbers you see on the screen here. And to get a hint at where on the next page, Corey, where our urbanized area is expanding, um, for our current boundary, we're seeing expansions in the Chena Pump and Chena Ridge area. Um, we're also seeing some expansion on the middle portion of Farmers Loop. And then it appears that we might be pulling in Moose Creek and House Air Force Base down on the southeast corner there. Um, there is a provision for up to a 1.5 mile 
hop, skip, jump, they call it. And the fact that on the uh, tape files that they included online, it showed that it's included in our area now. But we'll uh, contact the Census Bureau to, to confirm that. But we'll be looking at this map and uh, uh, starting, starting to begin to draw uh, what we want our urbanized areas to be. We have an opportunity over the next year to smooth out these boundaries and uh, make the boundary larger to what we foresee will be urbanized over the next 20 years. So that'll be an exercise we'll do uh, that will be underway over the course of this year. So stay tuned on that. We'll continue to look at maps, future meetings. That concludes my report. It's not on. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Do we have any questions on the IAJ update? Mm -hmm. Not seeing any, that'll go to obligations and offsets. Okay, page 179, uh, we did have a few new obligations uh, last month, um, and those were in particular for Fifth Avenue reconstruction. Uh, the policy board did approve um, additional funds for the design and utilities phase as part of the uh, TIP development process. Uh, so those funds have been obligated so that the city can continue their uh, work on Fifth Avenue to get it to construction this summer. And then on the next page, page, or sorry, page 181 uh, for offsets, uh, we did receive one new offset from um, closures of design phase past intersectional improvement program. And so available to us right now for project increases, we have about $80,000 um, for needs as they, as they arise. And then uh, page 182 just shows you our Project closures list, uh, which has remained the same since uh, last time you saw it last month. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Do we have any questions on obligations and offsets? I don't see any. That brings us to policy board member comments. We'll start off in the room here. Do we have any comments from folks in the room today? Here, Bruce. Yes, a very good presentation. Thank you. I enjoyed it. And uh, I'll learn more as I go. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Clark? Um, Two things. <laughs> when Airport Way was built, it was um, all the lights were sequenced. That was before they had turn lanes. And uh, the beauty of that was traffic moved very efficiently. And you could time, you could count to 25, and you would know when the lights are going to change. So on icy roads, you, you'd know when you could go or when you could not go. Um, at one in the morning, or was it midnight or one in the morning, they would change to yellow flashing on the east to west and red flashing on the side roads coming on to it. So at night, you would have a free flow through the whole thing instead of stopping at the ones that get traffic activated. Has there been, has there been a study by DOT, and, and he's unfortunately not here today, in the past that we know of as far as looking at that road again and seeing if we can't synchronize those lights to some degree. Has there been any work on that? Well, two years ago, using congestion location air quality dollars, we did find uh, an adaptive signal control project. So they put a device in each of those signals out there and now all the signals are interconnected route back to the DOT office. So they have a software program at DOT Northern Region Office that they can change signals how they would like to from their office and don't have to go out for a change response. So um I mean this this question is best answered by uh, Pam Golden uh, of DOT traffic and safety. But yeah those signals are now all interconnected and they and they have devices on them to change the timing, make them radar detect versus non-radar detect um you know at any given portion of the day. So they have more control over them now and changes can be easily made. But I don't know how they're Currently programmed for what hours of the day on top of my head. No, there's still traffic activated to a degree. I know that. Yes. So That's the adaptive signal. Um, it is always interesting to me. We hear about congestion mitigation, which I agree with, uh, because that can indeed improve air quality. Yet at the same time, we look at um, traffic calming, is the, the term, and slowing everybody down. And you go, Aren't these two a bit in the conflict? And so I struggle with that one. And lastly, um, Peter Stern, if you're still listening out there, if you give me a call, I'd appreciate it. Um, at work, 452-6461. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Fleetworth. Any additional comments in the room? 
All right, online, uh, Mayor Welch or Mr. Olds, do you guys have any comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mayor Welch here. Um, well, this has been a, a remarkable good start to our year here in the city as compared to last year. We haven't had to do any snow removal, but instead we've done ice pack removal. So we're ahead of the game this year, and I hope we stay that way. Thank you. No right, comments. Mayor Walsh. And nothing for Mr. Old. So that brings us to the end of our meeting. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next month or sooner. <laughs>